the ceremony on the 18th. The Toto Short Film Awards are supported by O2 Financials. And the four shortlisted films are A Day Under the Sky, directed by Pratik Boyar, who is here with us on today's panel discussion. Uh, Kutu Pratia, or A Partner in Crime, directed by Nikhil Sundar Sanan. And Chandra, The Last Time I Saw the Moon, directed by Nikhil V.A., who is unfortunately not able to join us today. And Kalsubai, directed by Yudhajit Basu. The links to watch the films have been uploaded on our social media handles. That's TFA, uh, Facebook and Instagram, and will be available till the 18th of February. Uh, so what we're going to do in this session, which is going to last for about 50 minutes to an hour, is that I, my name is Rashmi Devisani and uh, Priya Sen, who's a filmmaker. I am a professor at Christ University and I teach cinema. And Priya is a very acclaimed filmmaker and you can read her uh, bio in the chat box. Uh, we are going to be in conversation with the three filmmakers who are here with us today. I hope all of you have had a, a chance to watch the films because they're really, really wonderful, remarkable films uh, and promise great hope for cinema in this country in general. Of course, we know what's happening at the Cannes right now, but uh, sorry, the Oscars. Uh, but yours, uh, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff to look forward to. So we're going to structure it like this. Uh, Priya is going to respond to the films initially and uh, have some comments and perhaps some questions for uh, all the three filmmakers. Uh, and uh, after that, I will be jumping in with my responses and my comments. And uh, really, this is for us to listen to the filmmakers uh, and to understand, you know, uh, their aesthetic approach and their kind of uh, influences, etc., in making the films that they have. So uh, I will hand it over now to you, Priya, and then we are going to open it up to the audience towards the end. So please do put in your questions into the chat box and we will have some time to take uh, take up at least a few of the questions, if not all of them. So over to you, Priya. Uh, thank you, Rashmi. Um, it's nice to see you again. And uh, thank you, Basav and TFA for inviting me and all of us here on this uh, platform and I just want to congratulate all the filmmakers because I think the the films are absolutely stunning and as Rashmi said I think you know it's just this it's it, it's just very hopeful and it's amazing to actually um, watch all these films that especially some you know the times that we're in um, so I thought I would just um, sort of present a few of my uh, for each film uh, a sort of there were some moments that kind of, there was a moment or a moment that sort of like uh, summed it up in terms of a feeling and or, or, and, I, and my question or my response would be based around that. Um, and, um, but yeah, I, th I think just, you know, all the films are just so accomplished and, um, and yet so, um, you know, so gentle and amazingly crafted. And um, I think uh, all of, you know, they just they just extremely extremely um, uh, sort of complex works and um, so I would uh, so really congratulations to all of you um, so maybe I'll just start with you know in the in the order of uh, the film that I saw and um, so Kalsubai uh, Yudhajit I've I have seen Kalsubai before and we have spoken before yeah. um, and so it was wonderful to actually see it again and remember. But I'm always struck by just how completely stunning the beautiful it is and the square frame, which is my favorite. <laughs> and um, and just the stillness of everything, you know, the the stillness and the silence and the, the intricacy of sound that then just uh, starts to, you know, sometimes I mean, it becomes part of it, but kind of it, you notice every the the question of the frame itself and why you decided to have that particular dimension of
show the three people in the sort of the figurines and the masks that suddenly appear in the landscape. Uh, this is after Kalsubai goes off into the mountains. Um, I would like you to, so, so for me, things kind of come, you know, just kind of break apart or fall apart at, in, at that moment. And this whole story and, and, and the, the sort of the, um, the spell that she is, uh, that holds the film also, you know, so I would, uh, I would really love for you to kind of like talk us through that moment and what that did necessarily, if if possible, uh, or if there's any other that you felt like, and other other moments where you felt that you know that's this, these are these were these were the, these were the places where um, really uh, something that was so silently progressing has a moment of actual break um, that moves the story forward and that moves the the myth and the the you know and sort of because you don't sense her anger. You don't sense her anger until, you know, the spell is broken. So just this breaking of the spell, if you can talk us through, and the square frame, and of course your aesthetic choices with the with the with the film. Um, so I'm just wondering, maybe I should just lay down all the questions first and have all of us respond. Uh, like, yeah, that, that, that would be that would be good, right? Okay. Um, and uh, so okay, and, and now to just uh, to go to. Uh, Pratik's film, uh, A Day Under the Sky, again, absolutely just, just so moving. I mean, I think um, sort of this arc that you created of this world of the child who has embodied in this sense, the most violent of uh, and discriminated against sort of um, history of caste and, you know, and but sort of plays it out in, in, in really the most gentle registers, where it's all about actually um, being able to occupy a landscape which actually retains um, just the opposite of this violence, really. Um, so absolutely and, and so, so gently. And for me, one of the moments that really stood out was when uh, I think Balya tells uh, his other two friends that Aditya speaks exactly like the teacher, <laughs> you know, and um, to me, and, and, and then, and, you know, and then there's, there's Aditya and, um, you know, it, it, it's that moment where, you know, things just like, okay, because, and that's kind of that, that isn't, that isn't too much, it isn't too late in the film, it's sort of like, in the beginning, it's kind of like, establishes this difference between them. Um, so I was just wondering if you could sort of like, Tell us about the, this, the, the way the you know the the actual construction, the construction of this world that you have done in this film, um, and the the story and the and the process of um, just beautifully filming this and the arc that you have presented to us um, of the story, in which there is something underlying the you know the, the what 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 lies beneath is so devastating. You know, and yet we we uh, sort of we experience it in in a such a different register, right? So I'd love for you to talk about how you did that and how the story, um, how you constructed this film. Um, and Nikhil, uh, your film Partners in Crime. I mean, I think it's a it's it's really an editing. Uh, uh, Marvel. I mean, I, I I love the way it's edited, and I was reading your bio, and you are an editor, and um, so so I would really I would I would sort of like so, you know the slow reveal of both these stories parallelly. Initially, I was a bit confused, and um, <clears throat> then actually on second viewing, I was just like, oh yeah, you know, I can understand his choices completely. Um, but to me, again, this was, a, you know, this kind of editing in, that was happening that you were doing parallelly initially, and then the coming together of these two characters from the, the two separate worlds that they were initially in, in complete sort of grief and in anger. You know, one is angry and one is just full of grief. Um, and these two things meet in this most powerful manner um, for me and in... Um, and it's sort of that that becomes sort of the breaking point. And so again, I'm very interested in how you actually edited this film, and how you um, and what the what the differences 
on how you actually dealt with these extremely complex uh, emotions. Um, you know, the loss of a child on the one hand and this sort of like this, this anger um, that the young man has towards his, his parents and this so sort of like existential sort of condition of not really, you know, what do you do with that anger? And I just thought that it just like they found each other, right? They found each other in this film. And I would, again, really love to hear more from you about how you, um, what kind of these choices that you made. So maybe we go in the sequence in which- Yeah, we can go in the sequence. We start with uh, Yudhaji. <clears throat> First of all, I'm very grateful that a film which I, has, I have made like two years back is still uh, taken by Toto and I'm very thankful for that. And I remember having a quite long conversation with Priya in the Ramshala Film Festival during the lockdown, if I'm not wrong. And yeah, I mean, the question of aspect ratio is like, uh, as far as I can remember, because we shot it way back in 2019. Uh, and I was not very comfortable with the idea of making a documentary back then, because I had only made uh, fiction films, fiction shots. And I was kind of struggling, you know, how to make a documentary film. And one thing uh, which I think I was very keen that I do not want to give it a shape of a so-called conventional documentary with interviews. The primary reason being that I was not a Marathi. I mean, I'm not a Marathi and I'm quite alien to that entire uh, village, which kind of happens in India all the time because you cross one border and you find yourself as a stranger because there's so many, it's like so many countries. So that was very fascinating. But when I used to travel a lot before shooting and uh, those travels were quite aimless, you know, I just heard the myth and I liked, it kind of fascinated me. It was very enigmatic when I heard the, say, the one liner of the myth of a woman who climbed up a mountain all alone and started living there, abandoning a foster family after which the mountain has been named as Kalsubai. So that was the one liner I heard from a tea stall owner. Then I tried to follow the myth and I made extensive research and I realized that Kalsubai is not only uh, a deity in Maharashtra, but she's also kind of worshipped in Konkan and other southern parts of the country. She has different names. In Maharashtra, it's Kalsubai. And uh, the myth was very complex and it had a very political layer on it. Like uh, she had been, you know, turned into an incarnation of Parvati, which is actually not the case. I mean, she is a tribal date over there, but over the years, uh, the mainstream culture had made her into an incarnation of Parvati. So initially I was trying to make a film on this strategic eradication of the tribal identity. But it, since it's a film school project and we had a duration of 20 minutes, I realized that uh, I, I cannot, you know, do justice if I go in that way. So I thought of just making the film as an experience of the myth, the way I experienced it from an outsider's point of view. But then how to uh, you know, put it in visual terms, because when I was uh, scouting the locations, I mean, I was talking to people, making extensive interviews, which are not there in the film, but they're extensive interviews and very long audio recordings that uh, we did. I decided along with my cinematographer that uh, we have to show only parts of the image, the details which have evoked a certain sense in me, you know, how the legend is still living there. It is not uh, living in the minds of the people and it is manifested in small details like with the drawings on the door, the small, uh, you know, the in the regular activities, the way the women behave. For me, I was trying to find, you know, a relationship between the women there and how the how the myth of Kalsuba is still prevalent. So I had to bring out a certain primordial quality to the film, which I thought, and we uh, then I was reading a little bit about African myth and myth in general. And then after a lot of kind of uh, visual research, I found that mostly in almost all the tribal culture, there's a sense of symmetry. 
you know, often they write on circular tablets or square tablets and in their dresses, in their rituals, there's always a symmetry in, in their dance and everything. So I thought a one is to one ratio uh, will help to bring out that tribal quality on one hand. And on the other hand, I also didn't want to make the film look like a film. You know, because I am very fond of photography myself and uh, that is a big joy because that gives me a lot of solace. So I wanted to make it like a photo book on screen with sound. So that is more or less the kind of reason for choosing the square aspect ratio. And uh, for the mask scene, it, it's absolutely accidental. We were roaming about, you know, because we we're shooting a lot because we didn't have in mind how the film will shape up because I thought that let's just keep on experiencing the village by shooting. So one day, uh, I mean, during a lunch, we were there, we found the Bohra masks. And of course we knew about the Bohra festivals there. So I was asking around uh, about the mask and what they do. And they also said that we used to, you know, already at one point of time, we used to also pay homage to all our deities by wearing masks during the festivals. That scene was constructed then, you know, it's a, the one particular scene which we kind of constructed. Uh, we asked the children to hold the mask and stand in the forest. And of course, there's a lot of dilemma whether to put this in the film because uh, the, the kind of ethics that comes, whether you should do it in a documentary or not. Uh, but finally, I felt that uh, I need one moment where there is a certain, I don't know how to spell it out, uh, statement that I want the people to make, the children who are the future, regarding their own tradition, but not in a very direct way, in a very oblique way. So for me, that was that image, uh, you know, kind of a statement made by the young people. That's why we composed. And that was a very composed shot. Uh, it was like I composed it like a fiction film. And regarding the sound, uh, we recorded a lot, but you know, uh, that village uh, because of, uh, of course, the encroach of modernity, technology, the soundscape of the village is very different from what we hear in the film. You would hear cars going by, you would hear scooters and you'd hear lots of WhatsApp videos. And in one point of time, we were also thinking whether that should be incorporated. But then somehow, Mm, while we edited the film, I was always stuck by that idea of bringing out that primordial quality. And so I decided that, no, we have to design it from scratch. And uh, there was a lot of dilemma regarding this because uh, I was as also a student at FTI, doing it as a part of a student exercise, whether it is the right thing to do in a documentary. We had long discussions on this, but then... Finally, I felt that the film itself demanded uh, a design soundscape. So we designed it and we have, if I be very frank, we have used a lot of sounds which are not from there. We have used sounds from sounds recorded in Darjeeling, sounds recorded in some tropical forests and some very, you know, downloaded sounds and all these things. But for me, when we watched the final film, I felt that for the film, it will ring true to do it that way. So that was more or less the thing. Thanks, Yudha. I have a bunch of questions for you following your response now. Uh, I put in the chat box that actually, when I saw it, I thought it was fiction. And I would, but when we come to my turn to ask you or respond, we'll get to that. But can we move on to Pratik maybe? Uh, Pratik, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry. <clears throat> Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I am very uh, thankful to all of you. For it's a, it's a privilege to be part of uh, Toto Awards. Um, so, answering your question, uh, it wasn't very difficult for me because uh, uh, the whole material of story. Uh, I bought it from my uh, past. So uh, it's all about my memories. Uh, actually, I wrote this uh, scratch draft uh, immediately after my 
एफटीआई ग्रेजुएशन आई डिड वन ईयर टीवी कोर्स इन एफटीआई too much inspired from uh, lots of filmmakers so i was uh, trying to um, like put my inspirations on screen so i i felt that my work was little pretentious and uh, after my graduation i uh, came back to home and i wrote one scratch draft of this uh, story uh, it's uh, actually it's a little bit uh, real event which happened in my uh, childhood days uh, so that wasn't challenging to me but the main challenging thing was to uh, structureize that story uh, because the whole incident uh, means uh, many incident in uh, the film are actually happened with me so the protagonist uh, character was uh, more or less inspired by uh, myself but uh, i found that if i put that whole memory in the film it won't be interesting so i uh, i tried to work on it but uh, hello can yeah, you hear me yes yes we can hear you okay uh, so um so to make it more interesting uh, i uh, i have been continuously working on it but i felt like uh, um that that's that was not the correct time to make that film so i just uh, left it and uh, after the pandemic Uh, i felt like uh, going back to that script because i uh, i was going to means uh, we everyone were going from difficult situation and pandemic uh, was really hurting everyone so i felt uh, my old days were little bit more um, uh, means better than the current situation so i i was continuously going back into my past and i will really rework on the draft <clears throat> so i was a, a little i was kind of completely sure that it's going to be a plot driven film character a little bit character driven film than a plot so that was uh, uh, confirmed that it's going to be episodic film so instead of uh, Uh, using heavy plot i choose to uh, go with characters means uh, story will go forward with uh, decisions and choices of these characters there is no uh, complete uh, plot or uh, other things so i was continuously working on the arc with uh, being the episodic film uh, trying to put some arc so uh, those thing uh, really have, those uh, decisions really help me to um, put the whole narrative but uh, at the same time i was tr trying to be a little bit cinematic and dramatic uh, because it's a children film and it is based on my memories um, uh, i should be going with a minimalistic approach that was sure but i try to make it more cinematic because uh, i feel like uh, children's world is uh, more cinematic uh, as compared to um, adult world so to keep it simple and to keep it away from uh, intellectualizing the things i try to um, put i mean the so whole um, central theme of the story was exploring the society and exploring the impact of society on uh, children through uh, children's eyes so means uh, when i was uh, working on the script i was 26 year old but i the challenging thing was to feel it from a 12 year a 10 year old uh, child's perspective to put it from perspective of a 10 year old child was little bit uh, challenging so i uh, i was continuously struggling with my mind to put uh, intellectual you know, intellectual things away from the script means even though i am trying to be intellectualizing even though i am trying to put uh, uh, some commentary on society it should feel like it is coming from child's heart not some uh, 26 year old guy is putting dialogues in children's mouth so instead of giving uh, some particular closure to the um, scene or um, means in uh, in real event in real life uh, there is no um, particular closure to every event means some event happens and we just uh, leave it so few scenes i uh, write like that 
I wrote like that means uh, uh, they are discussing about uh, teacher and so means uh, they are just discussing, but uh, they they are not uh, bound to um, put some conclusion from the whole discussion. So they are just uh, speaking to each other. They are just uh, communicating to each other. And uh, through these things, I tried to put um, uh, commentary on the modern society, even though it is set in uh, early 2000s. Uh, so, uh, and uh, one more thing is uh, to uh, my one um, another uh, target of making this film was to make a perfect uh, film in my home region, Vidarbha. It is uh, in um, um, east, eastern part of Maharashtra. So I've, I am always uh, feeling, I have been always feeling like no one has made some uh, perfect uh, Vidarbian film because uh, we don't have film culture here and they, they, there are no more representatives from this region who, who are making continuously film on this region. So there is always some uh, stranger's gaze on our area. Like these people speaks like uh, that. Uh, these people have this kind of sense of humor. So I try to be, I try to be more specific about these things. And uh, so we did uh, shot in my, we did uh, the shoot in my hometown. And uh, the, most of the crew uh, was from this area. And uh, so, yeah. Okay, thanks Pratik. Uh, we move on to Nikhil and uh, there are already some questions in the chat box. Uh, after Nikhil, I will uh, respond with some comments that I have. Nikhil? Hello everyone, I'm Nikhil. Um, so I started uh, this film, like uh, the idea of this film, uh, like I got this uh, when I'm uh, studying in my college, my film studies. So at that time, actually I'm an editing student, so I don't have a diploma project. So I can't direct a film. So at that time I was thinking like, uh, okay, let's do something outside, like uh, it's a directorial thing. Uh, so like uh, I gathered my friends and like I started thinking about an idea. So it was like my initial thought was like, uh, let's not concentrate on the content. Like, let's take something simple, which can be told simple, but we can make it complex in making. We can try something uh, through the making style, what, what we have learned, what we have watched through our this learning time. Uh, we are watching lots of films from all over the world. So we are getting inspired in every corner. So we want to try something, that's all. So, Let's not concentrate on an idea. It's it's a long process. If you sit on an idea, I thought like that. So, like it's actually a project done bugging my classes. I actually, towards it. So, uh, like, <laughs> so actually, uh, as a simple idea, uh, like, uh, I thought take a conversation. How to how to make a a change or a dramatic situation to only dialogues. Uh, it's actually opposite to this filmmaking thing that it's told that uh, just uh, don't tell, just show. But it's, it's just opposite to that you are just telling uh, other than showing how can we make impact uh, other than showing uh, with dialogues and all. That was the initial thing. How can we uh, make a new thing, new idea uh, or a conflict through dialogues and talking and how can we give emotions uh, through these lines, these tones and dialogues. Uh, long dialogue sequences are so inspiring to me in different films and all. So I want to experience something in that. How can we uh, make an interesting thing, interesting scene or a film using conversation? So uh, it's, it's something what I want to try. Uh, on that idea, just I started searching my characters. I want how can we how can I make a conversation, interesting conversation out of two characters? So I started, uh, who will be these characters? Then 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 only I can uh, like come to a conclusion of how this conversation will be. Then I found these two characters that is interesting, which is in the two parts, two different stages. So. so which is very hard to come together in a, in a real life scenario. It is very hard to these two people to come together and talk in a very easy way. So it's it's not going to happen in that way. 
so in a cinema i want to make that happen so i i tried on situation how will that happen how will they how will they meet and how will they talk like uh, it's a different thing so so i started on working on that drama how will they come what's their past uh, from what emotional thing they are coming to this scene i i worked on backwards from this conversation from the last scene i worked on the back back stories of these two characters from what background these characters are coming what's their internal conflicts and that will decide this conversation how this conversation will go and it will end up in a conclusion that's what what what's my process of uh, making this idea and but the idea is simple if you talk like like you know like that's all it can can make it to an end peaceful ending there's no need of like making so much of chaos so that 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 simple idea it's not happening anymore like we are quarreling we are we are, we are making conflict always with people so it's very complex everything so i want to make it uh, to show it as in a complex way that simple idea how uh, this this thing how this how this breakdown between these two people will happen and um, it's not so easy we are not letting ourselves and others talk each other in in an understanding way like so i want to make that scene like that so after that uh, when framing that idea then i worked on how to make that film that's what i concentrated more i i, I very easily uh, just got into the idea the the content i easily worked on and i locked it uh, and i was sit on uh, sat on that uh, like after that or like changed anything uh, i got locked very easily then i worked on like on making how to making this a back to because because i wanted to give a theater experience i want to like in that way like i want to make it in a commercial way like even studying in this uh, institute way so uh, i approached that also in that dramatic you know not 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 in like more true to life it's it's a larger than life thing i dramatized it uh, in certain ways in certain scenes which is necessary to get that impact so that was my style that was my approach to the film and all my friends uh, all the other technical people like uh, who contributed to that film which made it in that way um and like i'm very happy that you mentioned the editing part of the film because like i, I spent a lot of time in editing to make this because it was the area that i i, I worked so much in this film the post production because i i wanted to i shot this idea in a very scattered way i i i shot it everything every dialogues every everything they are going to do they are going to tell and it was a lot of there was a lot of rushes with me and a lot of time uh, to tell the story so i spent a lot of time in uh, editing and this uh, parallel uh, narrative is made in the editing itself it was wrote in a linear way but then i took the decision that it is a good narrative structure and i switched it to that and it was made in the editing table that that style actually was made and this choice so that's all it's simple i want to so it's simple that's all okay thank you all three of you and uh, we'll have priya jump into the conversation at a point later but i'll just uh, give a very brief uh, sort of response and maybe a couple of questions to all of you and we go in the reverse order now so i'll start with responding to nikhil's yeah. film which uh, so uh, you know I, i mean also just a sort of general uh, overview not to need to draw connections across the films but there's something very interesting to watch these three together you know as coincidences uh, right because um, they were all, they were they're all shortlisted uh, and each of them have a very different approach to uh, dramatic tension uh, which i found very interesting i'm assuming you have all seen each other's films uh, so uh, and the sound design uh, as well as the uh, history within which one can locate each of your three films like if i have to say what is the lineage you know how do i trace uh, this kind of approach to filmmaking back then it's a very distinctive and very different approach that is emerging in all three of your works and for nikhil uh, for me it was it's a very contemporary film like i can very easily locate it within contemporary malayalam uh, cinema uh, you know and um, uh, you're saying that you don't want conflict but your film begins with huge conflict and uh, of course alcohol always comes to the rescue especially in kerala so uh, and so so you know uh, i think it's it's very interesting in terms of two people running away from their situations and then meeting each other and uh, 
coming to terms with what they're each going through through a bonded friendship uh, in adversarial situation over alcohol, which always makes things easier, as I said. So, uh, so it's a very classic kind of approach to uh, f- fiction uh, in 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 some sense. Classic in the sense that uh, you know there is a adequate melodrama that helps the narrative to take the maneuvers that it needs to, uh, which is very endearing to an audience. So I found that uh, what I found really remarkable was your control over the craft, just sheer control over the craft, because. Uh, it's quite easily possible to lose the audience's attention when you're trying something which is so classically cinema, right? Uh, and uh, I'm assuming on not very huge uh, resources, etc. So I really have to congratulate you just on the sheer craft with which you've uh, held everybody's attention. And um, uh, the I think the uh, the texture of the encounter in the sense that it is adequately personal, but it isn't, you don't really get to know either of the characters very well. Right? I'm guessing that's also to do with the duration. So they, they are uh, symbolic characters in some sense. So, and uh, in a very strange way, I think there's a lot of symbolism that in, in very different ways that runs through um, all of your films. So I don't specifically have a question for you, but I just really thoroughly enjoyed watching it. It's a very contemporary film. I think, you know, all, all audiences of all ages will, and from everywhere in the country can easily relate to a film like this because uh, the language is Malayalam, but uh, it could be anywhere. It's a story that can be located anywhere. It's not necessarily a Kerala film. And that I find it interesting, I'll move on to Pratik, that he says that I wanted to make a Vidarbha film. Right, because uh, when I, I loved your film, I mean, I was absolutely like I, I'm a Marathi speaker also, so I connected with it because I could understand the nuances of the language, and um, I, I think a lot gets lost in the subtitling because it's a very particular kind of Marathi, and I think that comment on the teacher, you know, Aditya speaks just like a teacher, which is such a uh, like uh, it carries so much weight, it carries so much meaning. Uh, I think to be able, like the lang- to be able to understand, discern the difference between how the teacher and Aditya speak in terms of uh, just the addiction or the use of words. Uh, I had the misfortune of studying in Pune, just like the two of you, uh, Yudhajit and uh, Pratik, and I know what Pune Kar Marathi and you know all of those politics of language and the proper. Marathi is there. So uh, for more, I mean, I was particularly happy that I could relate to it in, in, in a linguistic register also, which I feel is a very important one for you to say that it is a Vidarbha film. Because um, like Nikhil's film, it could be a film that could be played out pretty much in any rural part of, uh, you know, urbanizing rural part of India in some sense. Uh, but to me, it was also a film which belonged to uh, history that I have heard from my parents in the sense of what childhood could possibly once have been like. Uh, and, you know, that was really remarkable. And uh, of course, it's a it's a very uh, significant and valid commentary on the education system. It's a critique of bookish knowledge. It's a pointing to the way in which some children have to actually do physical labor and don't necessarily have the time to finish their lessons and all of this. So what I found very moving in your film was the uh, way in which you position these two knowledge traditions, one schooling system and, you know, learning through rote and textbooks and all, and the others, the knowledge that you pick up through just your interaction with nature, going about your work, learning to climb trees, knowing what uh, plants do, what kinds of things, the scientific value of plants. And I think our education system system has totally uh, overwritten and overlooked that knowledge to those knowledge traditions, right? So, to me, it was very special that your film was actually bringing out all those complexities. And you said you wanted it to be simple, and it had to be from a child's point of view. It's very convincing, but it's a very sophisticated uh, perspective that the children in your film are putting together. And there is a question related to the uh, you having children as actors there, which we'll come to later. So I just wanted to say that it was very refreshing. And uh, it's a film that I think is not only uh, talking 
about children's experiences but it really is a film that should be shown in all kinds of educational settings because uh we need to really ask ourselves what is education today and you know what is it doing and of course histories of i didn't want to jump to a conclusion that it was caste but of course that was the first thing that came to my mind uh so i'll just leave it kind of open ended there whether it is uh, really like you know is it caste difference only or is it something else but um that i i um really enjoyed your film and uh, yudhajit so i didn't think it was documentary uh, i watched it and i thought it was fiction and uh, i was of course like priya struck by your the frame you use and uh, it reminded me of the those slides right which we used to project um and it also reminded me and now i'm finding out as you spoke uh, i thought this is an anthropological film but it's an anthropological film in the most beautiful way because it dismisses all the histories of uh, you know ethnography and uh, visual anthropology uh, and i didn't i really thought that it's somebody from the community who's made this film so like then i discovered your basu so so uh, so congratulations uh, of course because very difficult and i was making a list of the locations where you've shot and you've actually shot you've named four villages so uh, so you know i mean i'm wondering why is it that the community is but let me just finish what i want to say uh, so it's a beautifully beautifully done film uh, and um, it was where you know anthropologists fail in understanding the power of myth in its lived essence and i thought your film could do that like uh, just filming the dance of the kori women for example um uh, and uh, it's a very uh, it's a film which i would also say needs to be shown in gender studies classrooms for example because i do think so because i think uh, people have ways of de- negotiating their circumstances and situations using myth using song uh, you know using folk uh, traditions uh, again those don't ever find Uh, their way into any discussion of gender intersectionality which is uh, but that's because we overlook, overlook our own uh, histories and our own traditions and uh, we like to cite judith butler above everybody else so that's our problem uh, right so so my uh, question to you I, i do have a question for you is one is why did you use the films division logo there is a isn't there at the bottom there is a f- uh, on your no, uh, because it's a film produced by ftii the okay. people over there it's not in my hand <laughs> not like a reference to the anthropological oh, no 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 it no. everywhere they put that logo okay. and so then there it is so when you say that uh, it's it's actually based on huge research and uh, it is an anthropological study if i may put it that way right in some sense you're studying a community and you want to develop i have i must have said it's not a huge research then i am really not insulting the proper researchers what i meant to say was that the film the way it looks but after a lot of research i have decided not to put many things in the film but yeah, yeah. what huge research would be very misnomer because then i can insult to the real uh, researchers who are doing uh, great stuff there no but i think i mean this is why it's powerful when it comes across as fiction and not as documentary because there itself you kind of distance yourself from that you know uh, anthropological gaze in some sense but i'm very intrigued by the fact and this is generally to all filmmakers and you, you know priya you might have lots to say about this because you make documentaries is that you see uh, when one uh, uh, and yours is of course not it doesn't use conventions of realism uh or it uses them in very artistic ways so uh, it's not really realism in in that sense right so uh, there is a compulsion to uh, a visual or the you know to be true to uh, visual veracity okay or visual uh, uh, to render the visual in a realistic way let me put it that way just simply but you said that the soundscape is usually worked on and the sounds come from here then everywhere so my question particularly to those of you who uh, feel that you know uh, you're working through uh, realism in any form uh, why is, why do you think that there is this leeway when it comes to sound that it's a very interesting question i see first of all uh, i must say that uh, 
I approach filmmaking from a completely practical point of view. Uh, why? Because while making the film, I had an opportunity to interact with many anthropologists from Pune University and other places. And I was asking very stupid and naive questions. I've pissed them off, but I wanted to know how they look at such a subject. And then the whole idea of what is a documentary film, what is not a documentary film, what you can call it real, what you call going away from realism. So all these things often, especially to students of film schools, bother us. But for me, uh, when regarding the sound and the image both, I did not have any preconceived notion of being using realism or departing from it. My main motive was very simple, that I want to give an experience of the myth as I experienced it myself. Because uh, as you were saying, he was also saying that no one has made a Vidarbha film properly. Because in, while I was in Pune, I re I always felt like a stranger because, you know, I don't know the culture and it's not possible to know the culture within such a small span of time. I don't know the nuances of the language. For every uh, sound of the language, I have to have an interpreter. And then on the uh, other hand, I have this huge weight of uh, what is good cinema or, you know, the weight of history that makes you a little greedy about certain sonority which you like you know, all these things that, okay, I don't like the texture of the voice and all sorts of things. So there's always a lot of dilemma and a lot of confusion. And that's why I was very keen not to use any villager's voice. Because I, when I was talking to the women of the village, through an interpreter, of course, but some of the women knew Hindi. I found out that the women knew Hindi more than the men. And also they're more open. They're more frank than the men and they're more welcoming and and I was very I felt very comfortable talking to the women of the village the way they were speaking about the myth and the way they were talking about culture it was very funny it was as if they were talking about their daughter there was no sense of fear but with the, with the way the men were talking there was always a sense of sac sacredness a sense of fear uh, which struck me but the way the women were talking about the myth, it was almost like a joke. You know, I, when I was listening to the audio recording and I thought that if I use this audio where the woman is actually narrating the story, it, it seemed like a joke, uh, which is very fascinating. But somehow that was not my experience because when I was going through the village, clicking photographs, doing videos, making notes, I was very much, uh, how to say it? I was very much haunted with the very idea of suddenly uh, an apparition coming in a, in a forest where a shepherd finds a girl, tribal girl saying that I want to be your daughter. It was very uncanny for me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, you know, give the viewers that experience, which I had, which is why I chose a voiceover artist. So that in no way there is any uh, message or any any kind of hint from my side that this is an insider's point of view because that is beyond my po comprehensional possibility. Yeah, but the you failed that at that because I really thought that it was made by somebody who knows the... Uh, but it is, uh, absolutely the other way. I was always trying very hard to, you know, stay true to the point that I am an outsider. This is how I've experienced the myth and that's how I'm putting it out. Which is why I also didn't use interviews. Uh, I didn't know whether I am the right person to know where to cut the interview, where not to cut. So that was one of the main idea of using it in this way. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's really been a delight to watch all films and all the very best to all of you. Uh, uh, yeah. And, you know, I hope you go on to make many, many, many more films. Priya, you want to uh, come in? There are some questions too that we should. Yeah, I think we should just go to the questions and, you know, it's a, I mean, it's just also just one thing about this sort of blurring of fiction and uh, documentary, which is, uh, you know, can be called other things like hybrid and all of that. But I mean, at the end of the day, really uh, reality and truth are just things that are probably outlived there their actual um mm. you know like the yeah exactly and we know i mean it's construction from beginning to end so then what you choose to do with that is um you know is part of the thing so yeah 
Okay, so Anmol Velani has a question. Uh, what the, how difficult was it to work with children and what strategies did you use, especially as they are working as a group? Uh, were there moments of frustration or were you happy? Were you happy with what they delivered as actors? Uh, he adds, uh, child's world is more cinematic. Could we expand on this remark? And then, yeah, those are two, two questions for you, Pratik, from Anmol. Uh, uh, hello, Anmol. Um, actually, the uh, process of working with uh, children has both sides. Means uh, sometimes you will get surprised and sometimes you will get frustrated. Uh, the casting process was... Uh, uh, little bit uh, uh, confusing because uh, uh, I, I I knew that I couldn't afford um, cast beyond my uh, geographic uh, circle because of financial issues. So then I decided to uh, cast some uh, children which I uh, knew uh, properly. So the girl in film is actually my niece. And other three uh, kids, I <clears throat> I just started uh, wandering around my uh, local area, my hometown. Uh, it's uh, our Tahsil area. So I just uh, went to tuition classes and uh, some relatives and I was just asking, do you know some kind of kids uh, uh, who are enthusiast to act and they are uh, artist, some artist kind of kids. So then from one person to another person, I just uh, met these uh, guys one by one and uh, <clears throat> the casting of the lead character was difficult because uh, uh, he has uh, all of uh, complex shades but the casting of other three kids were so simple means uh, uh, they are act they are actually uh, uh, acting for them themselves means they were playing their own characters so that was very simple but the challenging thing was to uh, to uh, take some um, realistic uh, reactions from them is to uh, make them more realistic um, that was a little bit difficult because uh, they had the impact of uh, tiktok and uh, youtube reels kind of thing so to bring means uh, as per their uh, vision that that is the acting so to make them unlearn and to uh, teach them the basic lessons of acting was uh, difficult so to so i was uh, sometimes i was just capturing their um, natural activities means if uh, uh, we are not doing anything actually uh, we practiced a lot i uh, rehearsed them with uh, uh, actual locations and uh, we spent a lot of time like uh, two or three months with them uh, sometimes we were rehearsing sometimes i was just uh, discussing uh, uh, just simple things means uh, what do you think about this actor or just like that <clears throat> so uh, when uh, they were not rehearsing i uh, sometimes i used to capture their activities and then i used to uh, show them on mobile look this is how you behave in reality uh, this is how you um, act in re real life so there is no filter of uh, exaggeration or all that thing so uh, actually, uh, uh, in first week of rehearsal, uh, I couldn't sleep well. <laughs> so they were uh, just uh, completely uh, horrible. Their acting was completely horrible. So I couldn't sleep well. But uh, so after day by day, we get uh, involved. And uh, we had this, uh, this uh, time of uh, two to three months together. And then finally, on the shooting days, uh, the, the thing I used to scared about was uh, if uh, it looks like practiced, I mean, on screen, it shouldn't look like rehearsed or uh, means uh, everything is designed. That was uh, my fear. But uh, actually on shooting days, I just, uh, I used to leave them on uh, scene, in, in uh, the arena of uh, scene. Just uh, you have lines do as you want means i'm not uh, exactly improvisation but uh, i just um, gave them freedom to act like how they want so that's how it works and uh, your second question was uh, cinematic okay uh, 
the life of children is a little bit uh, cinematic uh, I, i mean uh, in the beginning era of uh, our childhood uh, actually we are completely blank uh, blank or i would say uh, children are in the process of learning things so actually as compared to adult or uh, matured brains um, i think children are more uh, more uh, what in uh, in uh, i think uh, the word uh, jigyasa will be better the, they are very uh, they have lot of jigyasa to understand the world so in that process uh, they are completely uh, um, enacting adults or all the things so that makes uh, childhood more cinematic so even if me or my friends uh, uh, revisit our childhood i feel like it's more cinematic not that uh, it is uh, free from uh, the intellectual world free from the um, uh, frustration and tension of the world it's the completely uh, pure form of life so that's why uh, i i uh, didn't put any um, intellectual imagery or means uh kids are silent and just watching the horizon so uh, i had some thoughts about this but i just skip those thought because uh, that that will look more uh, adult gaze so i didn't want that that's why i didn't put some images of like uh, people are just uh, sitting in uh, under the tree and they are just thinking so that's not possible so that's uh, i mean from uh, the childhood little bit more cinematic great thank you there is a comment from dada peer jaiman uh, to everybody they say i watched all films and all were good thank you and wish you the best and uh, anmol says uh, drama and film are not different in being able to use and actually use symbol visuality sound and dialogue as meaning generators and then he says uh, fascinating pratik thank you there are a few occasions in the film where i felt that the children's reactions were somewhat stiff rather than natural so uh, more acting classes from anmol velani uh, so thank you all of you uh, this was a wonderful discussion and um, all the very best and i look forward to seeing more of your work and uh, thank you priya also uh, thank you rashmi and thank you priya and uh, basav and everybody who has uh, held the tech side of things together uh all right goodbye see you.